show you some understanding, my son. Lord God, I love it, don't you? I like something alive, don't you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God is praise. Dear most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for reading your word. We thank you, Lord, for your word, God. Lord, this is what's keeping us alive, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to take us through this, Lord, and use us, Lord, as a, as a vessel of honor today, God. We pray, Lord, that you move us out of the way that your spirit, Lord God, can have reign in this place, Lord God. Lord, we pray against anybody, Lord, any rebellious, Lord, or any kind of spirit, Lord God, we're trying to come against the Word of God today. We love you and we appreciate you and we thank you, Lord. Lord, that you reign in this place today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and amen. amen. Give him a hand clap for this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The writer here said, I beseech you, beseech us to exhort, to urge strongly, to be called aside, and to beg. Amen. So 
He's saying, I, I beg you, I, I strongly urge you to do this, to come on your side for this. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So when I'm reading that scripture, he said, J.R., your body, what is my body? It's right here. Right here. My body, a living sacrifice. And you cut, and we talk about living sacrifice. Paul said, "I die daily." What does a sacrifice do, Brother Wayne? It dies daily. And First Corinthians fifteen thirty three it says, "Be not deceived; evil communications, which is company, corrupt good manners, which is habits." Amen. It says, "Awake to righteousness and sin not." It says, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Mm -hmm. See, some that didn't even have the knowledge of God, but just doing better than some that had his knowledge. Yeah. There's a thing there. It says, uh, and I'm going to go to, uh, let me see here. I'm going to go to the living sacrifice. I'm going to go to John. Let me see here. No, I don't need to go over here. Let me tell you something. Let me share this with you first. When we take it, I'm going to go to uh, here. I'm going to go to Exodus. We're going to talk about a living sacrifice here for just a minute. See, you know, we the Bible says a living sacrifice. We want to bring God anything. Amen. We want to bring Him anything. And you go to Exodus chapter 12, it says in verse, they're starting at verse 3. Let me tell you what the, the sacrifice costed back in the days, the thing that they brought forth. And, and we'll go there to, uh, no, wait a minute. Thank you, Jesus. i got to go here first. I want you to get this across real clear. John, chapter John, verse 2. Now, here we go. Thank you, Jesus. And 13. It says, now this is the Jews keeping the Passover right here in John chapter 2. It says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. It says, And when he had made a scourge of small corpse, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen, and pour out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables. If you can't follow me, just write them down and read them later. I'm reading straight out of the book. That's where you can get this. Amen. But it says, and he drove out the table, and it says, and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. So let me show you what the, the knowledge of God, I'm still in the knowledge of God. Here was the knowledge of God that they had at this time what to do. Now go to Exodus. Now go to Exodus 12. Let me show you something here. Exodus 12 and 3, it said, Speak unto, you, unto all the congregation of Israel. It says, Saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. This is what they was instructed to do on the Passover. Many years ago, here in John, they was the Jews came to keep the Passover. This is the knowledge of God. It says, And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for a lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats. Did you notice the word, take it out? Take it out. He told us to do what? Take it out. Then he said, to not conform to this world, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We're separated from the world. Take it out. Take it out from the other sheep. Take it out from the other goats. Get it out away from them. Why? Because this is going to be something set aside and sanctified Amen. for God. Right. 
the way God wants it to be. The knowledge of God here. It says, out from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. In John chapter 2, they're supposed to be doing this same thing, Kathy. But what, but what Jesus walked into what they was doing, let me go on down here, let me show you some more in this. It says, and ye shall take of the blood and strike it on the two posts, on the upper door and the post of the houses wherein they shall eat. It says, it says that they shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire and unleavened bread with bitter herbs they shall eat. Even though we had the sacrifice, we set it for across for 14 days. We did what we're supposed to do with it. We got the blood applied. We stopped there. As Christians, we stopped there. If you can hear what I'm saying. But uh, it goes on, Brother Wayne. It goes on. Just because you come to you, you've got the blood applied, and you've been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, there's more to it than just that. You don't just stop because you got the blood. I've got clearance. I've got freedom. I'm, I'm, I'm okay now. I'm going to make it to heaven because I got the blood applied to my life. There's more to this than just saying, Lord, I want to use you every now and then your blood to sprinkle upon my life and upon the sins that I want to commit. Yeah. There's more to this. Yes, bless the Lord. It says, He said, and they shall eat of the flesh in that night. That, I mean, just because you got the blood don't mean you quit. Right. It says, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs that they shall eat. Eat not of it raw nor sodden. They had a certain way they had to cook it. It couldn't be raw nor sodden with water. It said, but roast it with fire. He said he'd come fill us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There'll be something in our life to burn out sin, Brother Wayne. Yeah. Keep that inside of us that remembers the sin that's in our life. The things that we shouldn't be doing, the ways that we shouldn't be walking in. It's going to be there. The Holy Ghost is for a reason. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's took me and brought me where I am today. And he will you if you want to keep following him. Yeah. And keep it, letting him lead you. It said, roast with fire. It says, it says and unleavened bread. Not with leavened bread, but with unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs they shall eat it. He said, Eat not raw or sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his legs, his head and his legs, and with the prudences thereof. That's his insides, his guts. They did something with all the land. Amen. We don't just take parts of the land. We have to eat all the land. All the land. But can you hear that today? You don't take just parts of him, all of him. I can't live on two scriptures. I can't make it just on one verse. I gotta have all of him. He gave John a little book and he said, Eat this book. And John ate the whole book, the Bible says. He didn't eat just a little bit of it or what part he liked. And the Bible said it was sweet in his mouth and it was bitter in his belly. Swallow it and see what happens. It says, and ye, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until morning. There's a morning coming. Oh, and he said, listen, what we're supposed to do to this body? Mortify the deeds of this body. Let nothing remain until morning. Yeah. Nothing should be remaining. When his, light, when his face lights that city, there ain't going to be nothing remaining of this body. Nothing remaining of this body, of his sin-filled body. It says, and you shall let nothing remain until morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. But listen to this. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded. I got the blood, now I can take my garment off. No, he said, be ready. Have your loins girded. This is all New Testament right here in the Old. That's right. Your loins girded. Have it, be ready. It says girded. Your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste. It's the Lord's Passover. It's the Lord's path. Eat it with haste. Eat it quickly. Get this thing in your life done quickly. Get it done as soon as possible. Don't let the adversary keep you in a place where you're down in the ditch all the time. Where you're still on the side of the mountain. Sometimes we reach the peak of the mountain. We know there's valleys on out there. But the peak of the mountain is what I'm heading for. And that's what I'm shooting for. Why? I love the view. I love the view of the mountain. Don't you? You ever been on top of a big mountain and just love the view and didn't want to leave it? Didn't want to leave it. Oh, I like being in that place with God. Didn't want to leave it. Yeah. It says, for I will pass through. Here's what he said. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. 
and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and again all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So why was this? They were still keeping the honor to this Passover in John chapter 2. And then here when Jesus come through, here when Jesus come through to this place, here he comes through, he found them in the temple, those selling, selling oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers, Brother Wayne. We, we just want any old sacrifice. Come on. See, that's what, it, that's what it come to. They forgot the knowledge of God. They left the knowledge of God. This is how we're supposed to do the Passover. I ain't saying we got to do the Passover. I'm using this for an example of how we can beggarly the Christian people's getting about not worried about the life that they live in this flesh. Yeah. They're, worried, they're not worried about it anymore. So here they, we got the same example coming from Exodus over here to John years down the road when they said we're of God but they let down the standards and they started buying a sacrifice Amen. instead of pulling the own out, setting it aside, doing what they were supposed to do with the sacrifice that they had. That's right. No, that we'll just go to the temple, we'll just buy what they got and we'll take it in our sacrifice. That's all God wants. God said a holy sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is not just any sacrifice. It's a holy one, a set aside. They brought this lamb out from the other lambs. Brought this lamb out from the other goats. Brought it out and set it aside for a certain period of time that it be cleansed. And we are in that period, Brother Wayne. Amen. We are in that period where the lambs have been brought out and we've got a head shepherd that's leading us and guiding us in all truth and in all righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Church, it means something to not forget the knowledge of God. So what did Jesus end up doing? Making a score of coals, making him a whip. What did he do? He whipped it out of the sin of God. Turned their tables over their money. Why? They was not keeping what God said, period. Brother Wayne, if he could walk through some of the churches today, he'd just go in flipping pews. That's right. He'd go in flipping pews. He'd even flip all, most of their altars over. Yeah, right. He really would buy trash on the altar. Yeah. Nothing coming through. The altar still remains. There is a sacrifice still required when you come to the altar. Yeah. And it's holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. That's ours. My God. Can't we see we're forgetting the knowledge of God takes us to? Yeah. It takes us and gets us in trouble with Jesus. Here they was, God in the flesh, their God, that they said, I'm going to go sacrifice to, come into their temple, his, supposedly his temple, and had to turn the tables over, had to get rid of the animals that they had in there. Where are we at today? We're in the same place, the same place, just in a different air and a different culture. We're in the same place. God's had it so strong on my heart about this knowledge of God because I've looked around at this world. Every way that you watch news, read news, or hear news, it is you can take the scriptures and say right here is why you're in the shape you're in. Amen. Right here is the reason that the nation is here. A nation that forgets God's turned into hell. This place is burning without flames right now. But it's just a killing. He said, what if I come and it be kindled? It's being kindled by the unrighteous and praise be to God, everything that they're doing is unholy. Amen. And God is getting a stench up before his nostrils. Yeah. The same as he did in the Old Testament. I smell a stench. I smell rottenness. I smell unrighteousness coming up before me. Amen. And I've got to go down and take care of it. Right. The same way God answers to praise, he will answer in unrighteousness. He will come down and he will judge unrighteousness. He will judge unholiness is what he will do. That was a living sacrifice. Here there was forgot the knowledge of God. Listen to this. Let me go over here. Holy means set apart. I'm going to be at Exodus. Okay, I got that. Thank you, Lord. I got a little ahead of myself there, but that's all right. Acceptable, fully agreeable, well-pleasing. 
holy and acceptable. Holy, set it apart, acceptable, I'm going to be well pleasing unto him. You know, a lot of, there's, people think this is just, you just can't live for God. You can't live for God the way you preach it. Let me tell you something. We got to, you know why we got to preach so strong these days? The same way as the football teams that's so hard on their football players. They take them and tell them and get to try to get them to the most place that they can get. They, some of them might even know they can't run that fast. But they run, run it. You can do better than that. All right in their faces, Brother Wayne. Right in their faces. You can catch that ball. You can do this. You can do that. If I just settle, if I get you to settle somewhere, you know what happens? You're going to get stagnant. That's right. You're going to get stagnant. You ought to thank God for somebody that will stir you. Right. That will tell you you can do better. That reminds you that there's higher heights in God. Yeah. That where I am, I don't have to stay here. I can move. I can get to where I need to be in God. I don't have to be in this place of anguish and in tears and things bothering me all the time. God's got an antidote for it. He He's got an antidote for it. He's got a way that you can come out of. Yeah. Don't forget the knowledge of God. He's got everything. Yeah. I love you, Jesus. Conformed. Listen to this. Let me go back to the scriptures here. Let me go back to my scriptures. Thank you, Jesus. How many loves him? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I want everybody to testify. I want everybody to sing. I want everybody to come out and be excited about God. Amen. Amen. But I want you to be excited about the Word of God. And I'm preaching you freedom today. I'm preaching you a place that God's got for you. I'm preaching you Amen. something that you need. Try. That we need, Brother Wayne. We don't need to forget the knowledge of God. Try. Why do we end up in the shape we're in we stop following God? We get in a place that we don't think we don't need God. And we've got to keep it. If they just acknowledged God, God would walk through a temple that day and have been pleased. With what they was doing. But no, he ended up turning over the tables, buddy. Yeah. He ended up, why Jesus come? Because they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it and live the life. And I understand that. And I ain't asking you to live the life of the Old Testament. I ain't asking you to do that. I'm asking you to keep their morals. And keep me saying, we're not to be going out and killing lambs and doing things for us. And Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. He was what was brought to us. And he is the way we're making it today. But I'm encouraging you to live a good life. A holy life. Before God, because He asked for our bodies to be this living sacrifice. Not a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice. You know what a living sacrifice does? It continues. Yes, it does. It continues. So when He says, I want you a living sacrifice, I want you to continue to be holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. That is ours to do. Me, myself, also. It says, and be not conformed. Conform means to fashion alike. To fashion alike. That is to conform, to do the same pattern. We're not to be in the same pattern as the world. Don't be like that. It says, to conform oneself, one's mind or character to another's pattern. So here Jesus is saying, he tells us many times, come out from among the world. Be ye a separate people, saith the Lord. Come out. Right here he's telling us, and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Don't pattern yourself like this world. Don't do things like this world. Be not like this world. We'll get into some more of the world here in a minute. Let me tell you. There's plenty of it here. It says, and transform is to change. Yep. Amen. I'm bidding you to not conform to them. I'm bidding you to change. But be transformed. You're not going to be the same as them. 1 John 2 and 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that's in the world. It says, If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's hard word, but that's it. That's just the way it is. Ephesians 4 and 22 says, That ye put off concerning the former conversation. You hear that? That's conduct. Put off the former conduct, the way you used to be, the way you used to act, the way you used to talk, these things. You're going to be changed, buddy. Your vocabulary is going to change. 
Really is. The way you look at things is going to change. It's all going to change when you get in this Word. It says the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts. And 23 says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and in true holiness. Bobby's looking for a, a people to, to love him, plain and simple. Amen. If people fall in love with Jesus, then they wouldn't fall out of Jesus. Right. They wouldn't backslide. Right. Surely would. But they need to fall in love with him, Brother Wayne, and in his ways. That's right. His ways, yes. Huh? You, you, I, I use Danny a lot, but you know why Danny left the home? He didn't want to conform to the rules that we had at home. He didn't want to conform to the what we asked of him. He didn't want to do these things. That's why he's, he wanted to leave. He wanted out of there, Brother Wayne. People do the same thing with God. Yes, they, do. they don't want to conform to what God wants them to be. Right. They, do, they look around and they say, I, can't, I ain't going to do that. A lot of them say, I can't do it. I can't do it either. It's Christ in me doing it. You got to get Christ in you to do it. Yeah. It's the only way we can do it. We got to fall in love with Him. Fall in love with Him and say, Lord, I, you said you'd never leave me, never forsake you. And I'm going to do my very best and I'm going to stand by your side. And I'm going to be right here with you, Lord. And I'm going to do it. And He's going to be there to pick you up when you fall. Yeah. He's going to be there when you mess up to pat you on the back and say, Come on, let's get it. We can do it better. I can't help the first church people try to kick you on down. That's between them and the Lord. Right. But they, they need to listen to the preaching. But he's a God that's able. He's right there. When, when Peter said, save me, he rushed down and saved him. He, he pulled him up. And that's what Jesus will do for you in your life. Amen. That's what he'll do for your life. Yes, it's not a shame to fall. Nope. It's a shame to stay down because we've got a God that will lift us up right. and bring us higher than what we fell in and take us on above that thing that we fell in and we can walk over it next time instead of through it. Yep. I believe that with my whole heart because he does it for me. Amen. First Thessalonians 4. Here he is beseeching again, begging, pleading, asking. It says, furthermore, and we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk. Pastor, don't tell me what to do. This, listen to this. This is Paul, your apostle, your preacher. And what's he doing here? It says that you receive of us how you ought to walk. So what was Paul doing? Tell them how they ought to walk. Amen. And please God. Right. This is what he was doing. And we got pastors get up. I don't want to offend nobody. I don't want to hurt nobody. I can't mention this and I can't mention that. This is just certain things that they leave the church for. If they love God, they'll stick it to them. You ain't going to say enough to me to leave mommy today. Amen. That's right. Huh? I'm in love with her. Amen. Oh, I love her. Amen. You will not say enough to get me to walk away from her today. Amen. And if you, oh, you can do that in the flesh. What would it take if you walk away from Jason Kathy? Huh? You wouldn't do it. There ain't enough I can tell you. There ain't enough, but I can get you mad enough. Oh, but, oh, man, you might walk in the house mad. You might walk around the house mad. You might leave and come back mad every now and then. But you will not leave. That's right. That's why you need to be good if you leave mad. And if you don't find it during the week, come back mad. <laughs> Say, Lord, i got to find what he's talking about. i got to get peace in this thing. i got to know what this is. I love you, and I want to please you. He's seen it. They've seen it. I want to see it, and God will bring it to you. Yeah, if you love God, you will love Him, and you will be unconditional. Amen. Have you ever had an unconditional love? Amen. I got it from my babies. Unconditional. Huh, Danny's out there, but I love him unconditional, brother. Right, amen. Unconditional. God loves you unconditional. Yeah. And He wants you to love Him unconditional. He knows right off the bat we weren't going to understand all this stuff. He knows right off. He knows the generations that's coming up was going to forget the knowledge of God and they wouldn't be people teaching it. He knows that. But he said, I've got a spirit that I'm going to send back. I've got a comforter that's going to come and he's going to teach you all things. All things. That's what you tend on the Holy Ghost of God to teach you all things. And it still is that if you read it, you pray about it. You come to church, the preacher eventually brings that out, and you will hear it. Amen. You keep reading it. You keep studying it. You keep depending on the Holy Ghost to give you understanding. 
it. He will bring it to you. The Bible says you can't. You got to hear by a preacher. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. And how can they hear unless they have a preacher? And how can he preach unless he be sent? We got to have it this way. You can't sit at home pouting out for three days. You don't need no God. Need no. Get back to your preacher. Get back to your preacher. That's where we're missing. That's where the whole thing's being missed. We get puffed up. We stay home. We say, Lord, show me. And then after we ain't heard our preacher in a while, we get upset and we just quit going. No, go back to the house of God. Go back to the preacher. That's right. To where you need to be. Mm -hmm. It takes, listen, it takes, a, it shouldn't take this much time. But because they've walked away from the knowledge of God, now we've got to teach and teach and preach and preach and teach and teach. And to get them to hear. Why? Because they forgot the knowledge of God. You know what it would be to bring prayer back in schools? You know what it would be for them, the frustration it would give them to bring prayer back in schools? It's been out for so long. The way you commissioned prayer over at that Lincoln County House, they'd laugh your, you plumb out of field. You'd have to constantly be going in there, let's pray. Oh, I got one joining me. Next day, let's pray. I got two joining me. It keeps, you got to keep on and on and on and on and on. And then you eventually you'll have a crowd. Then eventually you can win the place, Brother Wayne. But you got to keep going. you got to keep doing it. You can't stop for nobody or nothing. All right, where was I? Thank you, Jesus. All right. He says, as you ought to walk and please God, so ye would abound more. What did, what did he say? So you would abound more. But I ain't up here to look high and mighty and say that I'm better than you and this and that because I'm the one preaching this and got an understanding of this. No, I'm doing this so you can abound. Right. Paul yeah. did it so they could abound. Yeah. So you can come up into this. Come up into this. So you say, well, oh, I'll be sad for a little while. Joy's coming in the morning. And get that in your heart. Okay. I'm telling you things like this. We've got to have this so you can abound. This is why preachers do what they preach, the ones that still do. It says, for you know what commandment. Listen to this. Commandments. We gave you by the Lord Jesus. I'm up here giving you stuff by the Lord Jesus. This ain't my commandments. This ain't my word only. This is the Lord Jesus Christ's word. It says, for this is the will of God. Even your sanctification. What's that? I'm bringing you right back to set yourself apart. Sanctification means set yourself apart. It says that you should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of consequence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner. Because that the Lord is a Avenger of all such. Brother Wayne, I ain't got to worry about it. Amen. God has set this in a way that we don't have to worry about. Right. Amen. He set it in a way that we can just be at peace. Among our brother, among our sisters, whatever it is, he said it for me. He said, I'm the avenger. I repay, saith the Lord. Give it to Jesus. Amen. Keep God. praying. Keep living for God. Keep being who you're supposed to be in God. Keep living by this word. This is what you've got to have. It says, Not in lust of confidence, even as the gym tiles, no, not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brethren in any manner, because that the Lord is an avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness, is what he brought us out from. The Bible teaches us without holiness. Peace with all men without holiness. No man should see the Lord. We've got to have holiness. That's inside and out. Inside and out. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God. He even lets me go home and say, Amen. Why? Because when you leave here cursing me, he said, they ain't cursing you, buddy. They're cursing me. He said, when they leave her speaking to you roughly, 
They're not speaking roughly to you, Bubby. They're speaking roughly to me. That's right. He said, you can go free. Amen. You did what I've asked you to do. You've given my holy word and ordinance. So now you can go free. It's up to me. David said, it's not my battle. It's the Lord's battle. This is not my battle. It's the Lord's battle. I'm just his living sacrifice, giving it out to where he can use it. It says, it says, and indeed, it says, and indeed, and to, toward all brethren which are in Macedonia, we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more, and that you study to be quiet, and that you do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we command you. It says, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without. And that you may have lack of nothing. The Lord smacks me right in the mouth right there. I don't know how many of you just smacked you, but he smacked me right in the mouth. Hey Amen. He does. He'll do that. Right in the lips. Right in the lips. All right. Let's go to 1 Peter 1. I'm almost finished. First Peter one. And thirteen says, Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind. Gird them up. And it says, Be sober and hope to the end for the grace. That is to be brought unto you at the revel, revel, revelation, revelation of Jesus Christ. Listen, it says, as obedient children, not fashioning. Going back to the word conform. Be not conformed. It says, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. You had ignorance. Now you're above that ignorance, so don't be going back to your former lusts. Amen. 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 Boy, they're all in here. Teach, tells you, don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. It says, but he, but as he which hath called you is holy. That's set apart, set aside, to be a saint. So be ye holy. In all manner of conversation. And conversation means conduct. It says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. The good old apostle brought it out of the Old Testament and reminded you from the knowledge of the Old Testament. I'm going to put it here in your loop. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Disregard those that say you're holier than that. Disregard those because you're trying to live right. Say, well, you're just being trying to be too good. We don't have to live at that level. That's right. Huh? Disregard them. Just, okay, live it. Just live. Get up every morning. God, I love you. Live it. Just live it. Brother Wayne, it, it, it don't matter. That's right. Huh? That's right. It don't matter. Oh, I know their words hurt, and I know it's a kind of the devil, but you, 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 you. the devil's more consistent than we are. Why? He's out to kill you. Yeah, Still to destroy you. Yeah. He don't. He ain't going to quit. No matter how much you beg and plead, if you get somewhere where the devil ain't bothering you, you better get back to the altar. Amen. Huh? That's words from the old preachers. That's right. The old ones said that. Yeah. If the devil ain't bothering you, you better get back to the altar. They'd say, he's got you. Huh? You can't get to a place where the devil ain't going to aggravate you. That's right. You can get to a place where you can be able to more overcome the things he's throwing at you. But you'll never get to a place where he'll stop. Because the stronger you get in God, the stronger he's going to be on your back. And he's going to want you. And some fall for it, Bob. Some fall for it. Some fall for it. And over in chapter 2, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies, being one thing at home and being one thing at church, and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere miracle of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto you as a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chose in indeed of men, but chosen of God. Men despised him. 
Men shoved him aside. But he was approved of God, Brother Wayne. It says, in, it says, this way indeed of men, it says, but chosen of God and precious. He also as lively stones are built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So I've read to you where you're a living sacrifice. Your body is. And then now you've got the spiritual sacrifice that's with by Jesus Christ, Brother Wayne. It says, wherefore also in and contained in the scriptures, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. You won't be put to shame. You won't be put to shame. Confounded, that's what it means, put to shame. Won't be put to shame, please. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them which is disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Huh? Don't be put to shame. You get put to shame, you're going to be put left behind. Oh, but you just keep right on the going. Keep right on the going. Don't be ashamed of that dress in Walmart. Amen. Because they looking at you funny. Don't be ashamed of that long, pretty hair for God. Because they look at you funny. Amen. It's the truth. Don't be ashamed of this stuff. Don't be ashamed of God. He's not ashamed of you. He's not ashamed of you. He said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father and His angels. So how dare us to be ashamed of Him and His what are they seeing? You say, well, you're mentioning outward stuff. Hey, man, that's what they're seeing. Yeah, what they're seeing. Just like the banana thing. <laughs> huh? Yeah, the banana, the inside's what we eat, but the outside's how we judge that banana before we buy. That's right, that's right. amen. That's right. So we're to live for God on the outside and the inside. Amen. That's right. To be where they walk up to you. And say, hey, you're a Christian, ain't you? Oh, they walk, been walking up to me and say, hey, you're holy in this ain't you? Amen. Proud of it. Thank God. Thank God. But we're in a world now they ain't even going to hear anymore. It is. If you get a weird look, it's from most of the time, it's from a denominational person. Yeah. It is. You can ask where you go to church at. Ask so and so this and that. Okay. I just want to know. You look at me funny. Like it. <laughs> it, it's just the truth. I can't help it but tell you the truth. It is that way. The world can care less. That drunkard down there will speak better to me than the church people will. Yeah, that's true. They will. That's true. Yeah. Why? Because I don't disregard you. I still stop and say hi and tell them I love you and say I'm praying for you. Yeah. Won't you come to church sometime? Yeah. Ain't too good for it. Yeah. Man, you're a fine fellow. <laughs> you stop and see the others. I just can't understand how he believes. <laughs> I can't understand how he believes. Where he gets all this stuff at. Yep. That's what you hear. Because they forgot the knowledge of God. They've left the knowledge of God up to two or three people and stopped seeking God for themselves. Stop reading the book for themselves. Now it's just what everybody else says. I'm just being totally 100% honest with you. I live around this place like y'all do. I'm just being honest with you. God's good. It says, but ye are a chosen generation. Okay, it says, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Even to do to them which stumble at the word, be disobedient whereto also they were appointed. It says, but ye, me, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy. But now have obtained mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having their conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that may by your good... Oh, no, you're supposed to do works, Pastor. Pastor, works don't mean nothing. Huh, works. Jesus did all the work. Yeah, he did so you could get to here. Right. He sure did so you could live holy and acceptable unto God. There wasn't no other way you could live holy and acceptable without the blood of Jesus on your life. That's right. Amen. There ain't even no way you'd even think toward living like this without the blood of Jesus. Right. It says, having your own comfort, it says, speak against you as evildoers, that they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of 
So is it for your glory that you're doing these good works? No. It's for his glory. Mm -hmm. well, by your good works, they'll glorify God is what they'll do. By your good works, the same here as it is in the other the Testaments. It says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king or supreme, for unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence in ignorance of foolish men. As free and not using your liberty. Listen to this. Don't use your liberty of grace. Don't use your liberty that God has given you for a cloak of maliciousness. A cloak of maliciousness. And that's it. Maliciousness means evil. But as the servants of God. It says, honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Listen, church. We need not to forget the knowledge of God. Right. We forget the knowledge of God and we forget Christ. <clears throat> we do. We forget Christ. We forget what he's done. And we leave and we try to live in life for ourselves. He's coming back soon. He's coming back after the church that's made themselves ready. Yeah, amen. But if you want to see why the world's in the shape of him, just go to the book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go to the book. It's all in here and what's going on. And I've took these three times and I, I've explained. I mean, from the, from, the trans, from the homosexuals to the transgenders to the LGBT garbage, all this stuff, I have explained to you where it's come from out of the Word of God. Oh, yeah. I've not told none of you that you're going to go to hell for certain things. I've not done that. And I've, I've got comments out through the week from, from these messages. But here's the thing. What I am telling you is we're living here now. We're dealing with this junk. And we're to be separate from them. That's right, amen. Just because it seems like they're the majority don't mean we're to back down on the Word of God. Amen. You understand? Amen. We don't back down from the Word of God. And I can't be there with you to help you hold up either sometimes. But Jesus says, but you know what will keep you there? Love for Him mm -hmm. will keep you there. Yep. Love will keep you there. When somebody says something wrong about my brother, I love him. I will uphold him. I will say, no, that's not him. No, you're speaking that wrong. And I've had to do it many, many times for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Why? Because I know them in the spirit. And I know they wouldn't do such things as being told on. Right. So I'll stop the mouths, the foolishness right there. Yep. Got to do it. I love the Lord. He's a good God, church. Yeah. But if we forget his knowledge, we're going to fall like the rest of them. That's right. And the Bible says, you also said, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I want to serve the Lord here in Hamilton Creek. Right. I want to preach the word. I want to live the word. I want to be the word. This is what I want to, do. I want to be for this place right here. That is my vision for this place right here. Lots of pastors have already walked out this door because they said we ain't growing. Lots of pastors would. Oh, I hear it. Oh, they walk out. We're not growing, so I ain't who you need. I'm not who you need. Listen, I want the seats filled. I want them full. Don't get me wrong. But if I can get you to heaven, that's my greatest Amen. possession right there. If I can get you to heaven. If I can help you to not compromise and be who you're supposed to be in God, Amen. that's what I want to do here now. That's, who, that's what I want to do. I want to help you. Be here. I'm growing with you. I have been now for 11 years or longer. I've been growing with you. And I'm still growing. You're still growing. We'll never stop growing. No, I'll never to get to a place where I say I don't need more of the Lord or I don't need no teaching or I don't need it. But you need to know, we need to take and read this book. I want to encourage you every time we come to church. I want you to read. I want you to study. I want you to have these questions. Have these que Whether you bring me a question or not, I can't answer. Ask me. Mm -hmm. I'll go to seek and help you. I'm going to seek it and find it. I'll help you along this way the best that I can. I will do it. But it's going to take God to give me an answer. I don't want nothing from no other organization yeah. or denomination. Yeah. I want God to give me an answer. Because I can read this book and, I, and the, the answers God gives me in a lot of things are a lot different than what the denomination is. It really has. It's the truth. 
The denom- and why do I see? I, the denomination things. Why do I single them out so much? Is because to me that's the world's church. It is. Denominations are the world's church. It is. God's got one church. He's got one church. And if there's anything that he wanted his house to be called, the Bible says it's to be called the house of prayer. Amen. That's what he said. That's the only name that if he said, yeah, and I could, and you know, if you're going to put something over the door, he'd put a house of prayer. That's right. Amen. Is what we need to do. Because that's what's in the book. That's going by the book. Mm-hmm. I, ain't out to, I ain't out to lift up another organization right. or start one of my own. Amen. No, I ain't out to do that. I ain't out to call us one or the other. Right. I'm out to say we love Jesus. Amen. I'm out to say that we're going to live by this book. Yeah. If anybody asks you what your bylaws is that you're for, you go to church, hold the book up. Amen. There's our bylaws. Right. Live by them. <coughs> well, you're holding both of them. Yeah, old and new's in our world. Doing the best we can. That's what I want you to tell. We got the book here. In front of us. We're learning our moral values from the Old Testament. We're bringing it over. We don't want these problems in our homes, so we're holding to them. We don't want these problems, so we're learning from our schoolmaster to keep this stuff out of our house. Amen. 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 Learn from our schoolmaster to keep it out of our house. Amen. I love the Lord, don't you? He's a good God, Brother Wayne. I thank him for his word because it's what brings us through. All right, I'm finished. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.